Today is a very exciting day because I'm going to start the Vampire Lestat. And no, I'm not wearing fingerless gloves. These are for my arthritis that I do not have diagnosed. I guess they are fingerless gloves. I've got it about a week or two ago and I've been putting it off simply because of my terrible sleep schedule, which I have not fixed. So I'm done putting it off. I'm just gonna freaking read it. It is currently 7.41 in the morning and I have not slept all night. So obviously it is the perfect time to start this book. God, it's so yellow. Like, I got this book from thriftbooks.com or you can use the app. I highly recommend it because I got it for like $5 and they just shipped it to me and it came in about a week. Anyway, I'm really excited to read this. I love Lestat. When I first read Interview with a Vampire, he wasn't my favorite, but I did not dislike him. And then I watched the show and oh my God, they changed Lestat a lot. And I could be one of those people that ridicule the producers for changing the characters from their canonically correct personalities, I guess. But honestly, I love the changes. He was extremely likable in the show, even though he had his very big dislikable ways about him. Everyone ended up loving him no matter what he did, basically, because he was extremely attractive. But then I watched the original Interview with a Vampire 1994 film, and oh my gosh, I just love that portrayal of him. I feel like that film's portrayal of Lestat is extremely accurate. Tom Cruise played him very great. And so now I'm reading this, or going to read this, and I'm really excited to read it with the Tom Cruise 1994 version in my mind. Because before, when I read the first book, the way I pictured Lestat was not actually attractive. I listened to the audiobook halfway through the first book and it was so good. It was narrated by Frank Muller and I just found it on YouTube and he is so good. When I tell you like, if you're going to listen to any of the Vampire Chronicles on audiobook, look up Frank Muller's version because his voice acting is just amazing and I can only picture it with his voice acting now. Also, if you guys wanna see what I'm reading, currently or what I'm into, what I'm adding to my TBR. I'm going to link my Goodreads in my description below. So if you want to friend me on there, I would love to have a book buddy to go along with this journey with me. I'm really excited to start reading this book because the first one, I just adore Anne Rice's writing and the style she writes in. She just sounds so like, it's perfect. And the way she describes vampires is like honestly my favorite way that vampires have ever been described. I'm going to start this book now. So yeah, see you later. Okay, so 11 pages in. I am shocked at how different Lestat is already. I just want to read this one line to you guys. And more than ever, I was resolute that I would not drink innocent blood. So this is shocking to me because Lestat is known for being crazy and just taking whatever victim, whatever prey, whatever blood he wants. He will literally kill anyone that he wants to. And in the first book, he saw that as fun. He made it kind of a game to hunt and pick out these people that he wanted to kill. And that's why Louis was so mad for always just taking whoever he pleased. And now in this book, only 11 pages in, it is clear to me that he has a distinct type, and that is murderers. Literally cleansing the world of murderers. You slay, Lestat. You absolutely slay. And he's a rock star. He's gonna be in a band. I am in shock. This man surprises me in more ways than I can imagine. Also, apparently, only 11 pages into the book, according to Mr. Frank Muller, that is 28 minutes worth of reading because I am on the 28 minute mark of my audiobook and it's 11 pages. So we're gonna be here a while. I just updated my Goodreads with that quote because I really liked it and I'm only 2% in. I love how in love Lestat is with the modern 1984 life. I'll get back to you guys. He found out that Louis wrote about him in an interview with the vampire. Why am I getting emotional? Why am I sad? Like, that's so sad. He didn't know that the book existed. 
and now he's reading it he's halfway through like can you imagine the the spot that he's in and doing that stop that is crazy and these freaking teenagers recognize Lestat, like they know his name. They think he's pretending to be Lestat from the book. Oh my, this is crazy guys, I gotta keep reading. Um, Lestat wants to find Louis. He wants to talk to him. And he wants to write a book on what he had learned before he met Louis as a vampire which we did not hear anything about in the first book because he was always so secretive and would not tell us or Louis. So if he's really about to write this book and tell us about what he had learned before he met Louis, and if he's about to talk to Louis, if Louis is in this book, I cannot express to you how excited I am. If he is not, that's okay too because I really didn't expect him to be. But if he is, that's going to be an extra double delicious treat. I am on page 17 now. I am already in love. Like, I have a feeling I'm really going to love this book. And I expected nothing else. Okay, I'm going to go get McDonald's breakfast real quick. And then I'm going to keep reading. I'm really excited about this book. <laughs> really excited and really happy. I don't wanna live. So here we are in the 18th century with Lestat. He is on a mission to kill some wolves. Vampire comes from Strigoi, which is a term used for werewolves and vampires, if I'm remembering that correctly. Am I crazy to think that maybe Lestat's creator this whole time was a wolf? I don't know, this feels very significant. There's this whole build up of mystery behind who created Lestat to be a vampire in the first book and how he was taught so much information from this creator. But like, what if he just was taught nothing and had to figure it out all on his own because a freaking wolf did it to him? I don't know, maybe I'm reaching, maybe this is just like wrong. I guess I'll see when I keep on reading. Disregard everything I said in that last video. I was completely wrong and overlooked it. But I am on chapter two, page 30. Guys, I just made it to chapter three, page 40. But I am so tired. I'm like falling asleep. Not because it's boring, but because I've literally stayed up all night. I think I might take a nap. I really didn't want to. I wanted to try and stay up all day, but I think I might have to take a nap. Honestly, I'm so sleepy. I'm loving the book. I'm loving the Stotts background. I'm digging it, but I will see you guys soon. I just got to chapter seven and I love Nicholas. I was a little bit scared going into this book because I really loved the Louis and the Stott like companionship and relationship, but I am very open to the new characters that are being introduced in this book. And although I do feel like this is not going to end up well and that Nicholas is probably gonna die, I'm enjoying it for the time being. <laughs> They're adorable. They're a great pair. They're a great duo. They just complement each other so well. I'm really excited to see where this goes. Right now, they are going to Paris. Literally, Lestat is like, pack your bags, we're going tomorrow. Bring your violin, that's all we need. So, I'm excited to read about that. I hope things go well. I don't know, I hope that their story isn't too sad. I feel like it might be page 63. I'm gonna stop for now, but I'm gonna continue reading later because this is good. Like. I haven't gotten bored once with this story yet. I'm really happy about that. So also I'm loving the audiobook. For sure listen to that. Currently on page 70. I've been listening to the audiobook for about three hours now. So it's taking a while. I'm really enjoying Lestat and Nicola, which I realize is how you pronounce it. I'm enjoying Lestat and Nicola in Paris a lot. Times are tough, but they're having so much fun in the theater. But now I'm a little bit scared because Lestat just saw a mysterious face repeatedly in the crowd that keeps disappearing. And I'm going to take a wild guess and assume that this is going to be a vampire, which turns Lestat, which I have no knowledge of, but I'm scared it's going to be a terrible experience. And that Nicola is probably going to die. And if he doesn't die, then Lestat is just probably going to have to leave him because uh, he's a vampire. Or, oh my god, what if Lestat kills him? 
I'm terrified, I'm scared, but I'm just going to keep going. So this would be chapter eight. <sighs> Guys, the argument in chapter eight, I was near tears. Um, I'm starting to believe that <laughs> Nicola does not think he's good enough for Lestat. And no matter how Lestat tries to convince him, he just won't believe him. And Nicola believes that he is the darkness in their relationship. Nicola is only dragging him down or dimming his light. I can see where he's coming from with the point of insecurity, but like he needs to realize how important he is to Lestat and that he's not dragging him down. They are a dynamic duo. They're a pair. They're for each other. He's not dimming his light. He makes Lestat better, if anything. I feel so heartbroken that Nikola feels like that. I feel like this argument is foreboding something darker that we are going to see in an upcoming chapter. And it doesn't feel good. It feels threatening in a way. I feel like Nikola is not going to be okay. Or like he's going to leave Lestat and proclaiming that he is pulling him down. I don't know, but I'm scared. I'm scared once again, and through that whole argument of theirs, I was like on the edge of crying. It just felt so full of emotion. The way she writes is just so beautiful. Like, I cannot say it enough that Anne Rice's writing is just amazing. I love Nicola's character though. Usually I'm pretty stubborn about introducing new characters. He definitely gets a pass, like a for real pass. You have a light in you that's almost blinding, but in me there's only darkness. I try to keep the darkness from you because I need your light. I need it desperately, but you don't need the darkness. And it's hard to convince him that he's wrong because he's very stubborn. Him and Lestat are very much like each other. When I read Nicola's character, I'm very much reminded of Lestat. I think they reflect each other in a very well-balanced way. Through Lestat's success in the theater, I think Nicola is struggling a lot because he's seeing how well Lestat is doing and he's very happy for him, but he's also envious in a way, even though he says he's not. He wants to be a violinist, he wants to be big, just as Lestat is making himself to be, but it seems that he's lost hope for it already when he's not even started or began to try. And I'm just... I love that chapter. I think chapter 8 was my favorite chapter so far. That disagreement was so well written, just... I loved it. It has been a long day. I look busted. It's like 10 p.m. I haven't read since this morning, but also I was looking over footage. And in one of my clips, you can see my tongue and I have a freaking cold sore, so I put medicine on it. So it looks nasty. It's literally just medicine. Like, please guys. I'm gonna try to go to bed early though tonight. So I'm gonna try and get some reading in before bed. A little bit nervous, but... I don't know what it is about that last chapter, but I was thoroughly scared. <laughs> okay, so I thought for a second, maybe my wolf theory was right because Lestat is saying he knows about the wolves. So I was like, maybe this is a freaking wolf, vampire, shapeshifter. <laughs> I don't know. But now I'm thinking he's just a vampire who can read Lestat's mind. He was in Lestat's mind speaking, saying wolf killer. Lestat is scared. Lestat is feeling fear, like genuine fear for the first time in a long time. And I'm feeling fear too. I'm terrified. That whole last paragraph of that chapter was scary, like... I'm nervous. It's definitely a vampire. Regular degular. I don't want the happiness to end though. I'm enjoying Lestat and Nicola? Nicola? Nicolas? I'm enjoying Lestat and Nicola's relationship and it's going to all get ruined. So we have made it to part two. The legacy of Magnus. Who is Magnus? Okay, I'm scared. Can we just appreciate my baby boy, Norman? He's so cute.
currently reading part two, The Legacy of Magnus, and it's a couple days later because I was very intimidated to start this part of the book, but I'm starting it now. It is 4.45 in the morning. I know, I need to fix this, I have a problem. If I didn't know that this book was about vampires, if the title wasn't The Vampire Lestat, I would be terrified. The way they describe the vampire that came to Lestat in Nicolas' room in the middle of the night, with the white face and the black eyes and the dark features, talking without the mouth moving, whispering wolf killer, I'm literally trembling, but I also had a thought. I was thinking about the first book and when Louis found Armand at the Theatre des Vampires. If that's, I can't remember if that's what it's called or not, but I was thinking about when Louis whispered Lestat's name because he was thinking about him. Then Armand was like, what was that name? Like, what did you just say? And he really wanted to like know more about what he said about Lestat. And I don't know, it made me kind of think like maybe he met Lestat before. And now that I'm reading this book, which is in ways a prequel to Interview with Vampire in reference to Lestat's story, maybe he does meet Armand here or one of the people from the vampire gang that Armand was in. I could just be overthinking this for sure. Just like, I don't know. It kind of is just like a dismissive thought I had, but this vampire that he is encountering right now though does not sound like Armand. It kind of gives more like old vampire vibes. A vampire that is well experienced, has been around for a long time. This one can fly. I don't think Armand could fly. This vampire can fly, climb up walls, which Armand could do. I don't know, I'm just kind of recording this because if Armand or someone in Armand's gang appears in this book, I kind of just want to have it on record that I predicted it. So, <laughs> but also I've had a bunch of terrible predictions that didn't end up being true, so very disturbed by this vampire right now and I'm scared for Nicola and the Stott's relationship. I feel like it's about to go downhill extremely fast right now. He just got abducted and is flying across the alleyway currently so. Oh god. I just finished chapter one of part two. The ending of that chapter was quite a roller coaster. He started like hallucinating or dreaming Lestat is losing consciousness and he's seeing his life flash before his eyes, basically. Seeing his mother, he's seeing Nicola, he's seeing Marie Antoinette, his life at the theater, and he's dying. This vampire drained all of his blood. I will say, I love how this book has chapters. It is so much easier to read than the first book. In only terms of time management. In Interview with a Vampire, there were no chapters. There were a couple parts. The parts were like a hundred pages each or probably even more. And, and it would just kind of go on and on and on. Which, that's one thing I think that Interview with a Vampire could have done better. So I'm really happy that this book has chapters because like once I've read a chapter, I can just be like, Okay, I need a break. I need to put this down and come back to it later, but Interview with a Vampire, you would just have to kind of choose, like, when you're ready. I'm gonna start chapter two. See you guys. Now, why is this vampire kind of... No, 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 no. Now that I think about it, how fitting is it? for Lestat to be chosen as a vampire when he's so scared of dying. Lestat literally had a crippling fear of death to the point where Nicola would call it the malady of mortality. There was a name for it, so this was serious. He was so scared of dying and he was gifted with immortality. Oh, guys, I just got to chapter five. So the vampire before, Magnus, he's dead, he literally just jumped into a fire. I really thought he was gonna stay around a little bit longer, but I guess not. It's starting to make sense though now. This whole time, Lestat never talked about the person that created him because he didn't even know him. Magnus didn't even stay around for Lestat for his first vampire kill. He just peaced out. And also I'm a little bit heartbroken right now because Lestat just said, I will never ever see Nicola again. Guys, I'm only still this much into the book and I feel like I have already gone through a whole 10 emotional roller coasters and now I'm starting to think maybe I shouldn't have gotten so attached to Nicola because Lestat is saying he's not even going to go return to him. So maybe he was just a side character that is not going to matter at all for the rest of this book. 
and I have this much left, what is going to happen? Literally, I have no predictions, like... Y'all, the power is out, but it's kind of setting an atmosphere that I didn't know I needed, honestly. The only upsetting thing about it is that I can't listen to my audiobook, but I'm gonna continue to read because this is like... Watch my window. I don't know the last time I updated, but right now I'm on page 134. Chapter 11 of part two. Ignore my hair, it's wrapped up. I just took a shower. <laughs> I just got to the part where Lestat finally comes back to the theater as a vampire for the first time. And also the first time that Lestat sees Nikki since he became a vampire. So I'm over here crying like emotional tears of joy because they're reuniting and it's adorable and I love them so much. And then Lestat is like, I want to taste this man's blood. I'm gonna say it right here, right now. If Lestat freaking drains Nikki of his blood and kills him, I'm not going to forgive him. And I get it, it's vampire nature. Pick anyone else though. Ugh. I'm going to be annoyed if he freaking kills Nikki. I feel like I'm not even making a dent in this book though. Like, I actually did read a lot more. Last night when I had the storm and there was no Wi Fi, I was like forced to read without any distractions really. I love Nikki too much. Like, if he kills him, I really, really love Lestat. But I'm gonna have some problems with him. Maybe get a little bite or so. Tell him that you're a vampire. Whatever. He probably will hate you, but... Well, maybe not. They're, they're kind of obsessed with each other, but... I first had a thought, like, Lestat, turn Nikki into a vampire. Even though that's, like, incredibly selfish, but it's either that or they never see each other again, or Lestat kills him as a vampire. And then I was also thinking, there's no way he is going to do that. First of all, he doesn't know how to do it. He's literally only been a vampire for like two seconds. He barely knows anything about vampires except for what he's taught himself, and there's no way that he would be able to make a vampire. But then also, it leads me into a second thought. In the first book, Interview with a Vampire, he knows how to create a vampire. And it seems like he's done it many times before because he knows what he's doing. Maybe he does learn how to do it quickly. Maybe he does turn Nikki into a vampire. But for right now, I'm going to guess that he doesn't. I really love them together. It's depressing. It's really depressing. You mean to tell me Lestat is turning his mom into a <laughs> What? I've only read like the first two seconds of whatever that was going to lead into, but I think Lestat is about to turn his mom into a vampire. Does he even know how? I don't think he does. I think she's gonna die and then he's gonna be really sad. Oh my gosh. I wasn't even gonna update this because I was like, no, I'm gonna get a bunch of readings done tonight. I'm gonna get progress done and then I'm gonna vlog after. But what? There's no way she's going to be a vampire, right? There's no way, right? I don't even know what to say. This was the last thing I ever expected from this book. I had not once thought about Lestat turning his mother into a vampire. And it worked. Surprisingly, it worked. She did not die. I'm just like, where is this going to go? Well, now I know that he is capable of creating a vampire what this means i'm a little bit scared to even think about also i made some interview with the vampire bookmarks we got baddie lestat and then we have like the movie poster i wanted one of louis but i couldn't find a good picture to put on here i'm gonna make more yeah i'm just in shock at what is happening right now